Uh, joining us now, we have with us Jonathan Deckelhan and Jillian Kay. Their 35-year-old Israeli-American son, Sagi Deckelhan, was kidnapped from his home on October 7th. Sagi was part of the kibbutz security team when the attack began. He safely hid his pregnant wife and their two young children, and then he went back outside to protect the neighborhood. Jonathan, what is the very latest, if anything, that you have heard about the fate of your son? Well, we heard uh, nothing, actually. We um, were in, totally in the dark, like almost all of the other hostage families, until a couple of weeks ago, when the first wave of hostages, approximately 100 women and children, uh, began to be released. Yeah. And uh, of the 100 or so, 30-ish uh, of them were from my kibbutz, uh, from kibbutz near Oz, uh, given that almost 80 were abducted on October 7th. And those uh, women and, and, to a degree, children, teenagers, started giving testimony about what they had seen in the tunnels. And that was the first time that we got a sign of mm. life from Sadi. So as of two weeks ago, a bit more, we know that he is alive. And we were able to gather, the kibbutz was able to gather information on, on, on many other hostages who remain in the tunnels underground in, in Gaza. Jillian Kay, how is it um, possible to manage your feelings in a situation like this? And I would, I would think you'd be very concerned also for Sagi's pregnant wife, his children. H how are you helping or are you able to help everyone cope? Well, um, of course, we're trying to be supportive and connected as a family. Um, Avital is uh, my, um, my stepdaughter-in-law. Uh, is, uh, mm -hmm. is do any minute, um, literally. And so we're all rallying around her and supporting her as best we can. I, it's, 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 I, I'll, it's very hard to cope. Um, yeah. It was a really mixed situation with the hostages returning. We were overwhelmed to get news of a proof of life of Sagi, but listening to the stories of torture and starvation um, it's, it's terrifying and agonizing. And he's one of the Americans still captive. Um, Jonathan, uh, obviously as part of what we know so far about, uh, his kidnapping is that he and a few others were trying to help other residents, uh, trying to save others' lives. Um, can you tell us more about your son? Well, <laughs> First is that Sagi was was working together with our first responder team, and, and those are the young and not so young men that you're referring to, who deal with everything from fires to, you know, during COVID, they distributed food to our homes when we were in lockdown, and um, some incredible bravery on that day. It was totally yeah. impossible, 200 heavily armed uh, terrorists descended on our small community of 400 people, uh, all civilians. Um, Sagi was among them. Sagi is the son every parent would, would love to have. Lights up every room. Uh, he's a creator. He's a builder. He was one of the first people to spot the terrorists that day that had penetrated into the kibbutz because he was um, involved in, in his pet project, his sort of moonlighting job, which is converting old buses, old airport buses, into usable objects, uh, which is just so him. And it was a, a project that we worked on a lot together. This time around, uh, converting an old, old airport buses into mobile technology classrooms to drive around the underserved parts of Israel where education isn't that great to serve Jewish and non-Jewish communities. And um, so I think that in a nutshell and Sagi just being this wonderful father um, is, is, I think, what you, what the most important things to know about him. Right, right, right. Um, I just, I want to ask you, we, we, we've, we've asked a lot of questions on this, on this broadcast about the response time um, on October 7th. And there's new information uh, breaking 
just in the past 24 hours about um, the prime minister supporting payments to Hamas. And I'm, I'm just curious, and I don't want to put you in a worse position than you're already in, but do you believe that your government is being fully honest with you and doing everything possible and did everything possible to bring your son home? I think that's an impossible question to be able to answer. I understand where it's coming from. Um, look, October 7th was a monumental failure in, of Israeli intelligence and defense and what's called in Israel sort of a conceptual um, failure. That is true. Mm -hmm. And one day people will have to be held accountable for that failure. But that's both past and future. Present is that not just us, all of the hostage families, American Israelis, which were just a tiny minority, and the other 130 or so hostage families are demanding from our government to do everything it must do to bring these people home. They were kidnapped. They were ripped from their homes. These are civilians, 11-month-old um, to 86-year-old um, people. And it you know, all, all holds, you know, no holds barred in terms of getting them home by any means necessary and possible. That's our demand of the government. What the government does, of course, we don't have direct control over, but the Families Forum that supports us is absolutely committed uh, to, to making that happen and um, lobbying and, and, and advocating, not just in Israel, but also abroad uh, for, for that to happen. And I just want to add, 66 days, 66 days, all the hostages, home, whatever it takes. Jonathan Deckelhan and Jillian Kay, thank you both very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you.